Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be checking out the QNAP TS473A. So let's get started. Now I've been using the QNAP NAS for about four to five weeks now and I gotta say I am thoroughly impressed. And I do want to thank QNAP for sending this over to me for review and everything I talk about will be linked down in the description below. Now prior to using the QNAP I also used their 2Bay NAS if you've seen on the channel before and also Synology NASs. And the 1019 Plus on my network was my full-time NAS that I've been using everything off of up until this NAS that I switched over to currently. Now, before I jump into the reasons why I did that, let's talk about hardware. It's actually using the all new Ryzen embedded CPU, which is the V1500B. It has four cores, eight threads, clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. It also has two sodium slots and it comes equipped with eight gigs of RAM, which is only using one slot, but you could either upgrade it to 16, 32, or 64. So you have plenty of room to expand. Now it also has two NVMEs and it's also a four bay SATA slot. Now the motherboard also supports two PCIe 4X lanes, which is the impressive part because I maxed out the upgrades on it. I'm using both the PCIe slots. Now talking about the outside, you have a USB in the front for fast copy and then two USBs in the back along with the USB-C. Now compared to the other NAS that uh, QNAP has, this one does not have a front display, which I thought it would because they do have the glass covering for it, but it doesn't. So that's one downside to this because I really wish it had the front panel so I could see the IP addresses and all the stuff that's going on without having to go into the system itself. Now, as far as the hardware upgrades I did to this guy, I added a 10 gigabit ethernet adapter from QNAP as well as the NVIDIA Quattro P400. That's how I'm getting the hardware decoding part for my Plex. Now, Ryzen does not support hardware decoding for Plex uh, right off the bat with the CPU. So if you're gonna need hardware decoding for your Plex media uh, server, then you will have to go my route, which is adding a GPU. Now jumping over to the desktop, we are on QTS, I think 4.7, 4.5. We are using uh, the QTS 4.5. And I think I do have one update pending for it, but it's not too much of a later version. Now this is the dashboard that you could see everything. I do like this dashboard over the Synology, the bar that comes out. This actually gives me a little bit more information. And uh, this time around, I, instead of calling it Nasville, like I did with my Synology, I actually called this nasty, so it kind of works out. And then if I upgrade it later on, it'll be like big nasty or something, I don't know. But going down this list, uh, you could see my NVIDIA graphic card. And over here it says the Quattro P400. 0% utilization right now. And if you do have a graphic card installed, this means you could actually use HDMI display applications. Without it, you can't. But the other NASs that I've tested, the 2Bay NAS, it actually has an output display, so you could turn it into a kiosk machine right off the bat. Now, I am using this guy a lot. Now, this is basically a mini server for me. It's strong enough to do everything I need to and priced appropriately to what I am doing. Now, this NAS is priced at 779, which is, again, for a NAS, if you're only using it for a NAS, it is a bit pricey. You could definitely get quad bay or four bay NASs for way much cheaper, but for the hardware that you're getting and for the upgradability and for what you can use it with, uh, it's justifiable. To be honest, 779 and for the amount of things I'm throwing at it, like I said, it's, it makes sense. So on my desktop right now, I am definitely running a Plex Media Server. This is actually where I have all my media right now. I moved everything over. And because I got the higher 10 gigabit ethernet speed, uh, I could stream any content without having any lag at all. As well as the transcoding ability, of the P400, if I'm gonna be sharing this with friends or family, they're gonna be able to see it just fine as well. Um, a couple of things I did add is container station. I am running about two dockers right now, and that has to do with my Steam cache, which means anytime that I download a game from Steam or Epic or anything like that, it actually downloads into my uh, NAS first, and then I pull it from my NAS. So any other computer who needs to reinstall the game, they would just pull it directly from my NAS instead of having to pull from the internet, which is way much faster. It also helps that when I uninstall a game and reinstall it, I don't have to re-download it. Like say GTA 5, that's like 90 gigabytes. I could just pull it right from my NAS. Um, I do have virtualization station and this is where I was actually testing my Windows 11. It's currently off right now, but this is where I was testing my Windows 11 machine. And their VM creation station is actually pretty interesting. When you create it, you actually don't have to go through the entire setup. I don't know if I could show you, um, but trust my, take my word for it. When you're about to install Windows, they'll just say like, hey, put a username and password, and it'll actually go through the install media and install it for you without you having to go through all the prompts, which is a really cool feature. Uh, as far as 
Linux machines, you can actually run it on virtualization station, or you can actually run it like a container, like a, a native speeds running their Ubuntu Linux station, because this is running on a Linux operating system. We're actually able to utilize that and create faster Linux operating systems. And I do have one spun up and it is fast. I mean, the, the Linux machine is really fast. If I was to open up Chrome, it's, it's instantaneously. I don't have any problems with it. So if I needed to run any uh, Linux operating systems, that's where I would go. Unless I need to run Arch Linux or something, then I would have to run Virtualization Station. But otherwise, if I'm running anything Ubuntu or Ubuntu 18, I could just install here and have my own little version on the, on the QNAP. So there's a lot more software to be, that you could play around with with QNAP and there's days of arguments on what you could run and what you should be running and stuff like that. I'm not gonna get through all that, but I do gotta say, for NAS that's running this type of performance and this type of hardware, I am able to utilize it fully to its full potential, uh, installing virtual machines, installing Dockers, installing all this stuff, and basically running it as a mini server along with the NAS. So that's why I actually switched over from my Synology over to the QNAP. While Synology is running an Intel Celeron, uh, it is running on a four core 2.8 or 2.7 or something like that, but I am limited by how many machines I could run, virtual machines, containers, and stuff like that. It's due to the heart, the CPU limitation. And because the CPU also side loads as a transcoder for Plex, I utilize that as well. So I find the QNAP is a bit more powerful and it's actually able to run a lot more stuff than the Synology. And that's why I switched over. In my conclusion, uh, I gotta say this NAS is not for everyone. It is a great NAS. I really do like it. I, but again, the price tag compared to what you're gonna be using it for, if you're planning to run a mini server and a NAS together and like virtual machines and stuff like that, this machine will work out great for you, especially that you could upgrade the RAM all the way up to 32 or 64 gigabytes. You could run a lot of VMs. Now, the, like I said, the downside is if you are only planning to use this for a NAS, it is a bit pricey. I would recommend something else if you're not gonna be able to utilize all the hardware. And especially this guy has a 2.5 gigabyte stock, like it comes with 2.5 gigabyte uh, internet already. There's not much more upgrading you need to do unless you wanna go 10 gigabyte. It's a really fast NAS if you got uh, your switch that you is able to utilize the 2.5. Anyway, well, that is it for me guys. If you have any questions, hit it down in the comments below. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.